and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Trundle Aurelian Soul. Uh, this version is this is going to be more of like a, a mid rangey value um, tempo kind of Trundle Aurelian Soul deck, not the Freljord heavy ramp version that's pretty popular. This is a, a viewer submitted deck that um, that's what the two D's up here stand for. These are all viewer submitted decks today. That um, yeah, that's going to be doing a lot of invoking. We have a couple of cards I've never played before: Giddy, Spark, Sparkleologist. You know, got to behold a celestial card, but that's pretty good. Granting any ally plus one plus one, give him some spell shield. That's pretty nice. We're going thirty Targon, ten Freljord. So we got Mountain Scryer in here. Um, you know, but going to the top end, we're basically an invoke heavy deck that has like Aurelian Soul as like our our uh, backup plan in here. But double infinite mind splitter, one Sky Descend to go with some of these dragons and the White Flame Protector. Couple revitalizing roar um, to be able to heal our nexus and maybe make something cost zero. Um, but yeah, that's that's what our deck's going to be about. So it'll be interesting to see if we can survive, if we um, are able to take over the late game, all of that kind of stuff. So let's get going. We're going to go play five games over in ranked. All right, so it looks like we're playing they who endure. Um, there are a couple of silence cards with the different celestials, so we're going to be looking for those whenever we're picking out our celestials. Uh, I do like White Flame Protector into Trundle as far as like stop stopping some aggro. We're going to need some earlier stuff. We can't just like wait till turn four to put our first thing on the board. Ugh, even turn three, no one drop. That's good. No like Bark Beast. That's good. Ooh, um, I think I go Moon Silver for the Aurelian Soul. But I don't know. We could just go with Trickster, or sorry, the Messenger. Could just go Messenger and and just keep getting more card draw. In, I'm gonna go Moon Silver. We already have, like, this is already turn three. Let's go. <laughs> We're gonna have cheapest Aurelian Soul. Is that the plan? But I already have like turn four down, turn five down. Um, you know, turn six we can have these two, and then maybe we invoke and hit another Moon Silver, and we go turn seven Aurelian Soul. Maybe. Furious. I think trading White Flame Protector and Callista is a good trade, I think. <laughs> now, so this looks like a little bit different version of Endure that we're playing against with, you know, with Priestess and everything. Was I supposed to play Moon Dreamer here and invoke again and look for another Moon Silver? Then don't block. I'm not telling you that you have to block. I was leaving you alone, little buddy. So I can go with the spark. Geologist, Sparkleologist, and give the Trundle plus one plus one and Spell Shield. And then afterwards, of course, play Priestess. Come on, come on. Yeah, it's worth it. Obviously, they're going to challenge these two with the two saplings. I think that's just better than spending my whole turn playing like Moon Dreamer or White Flame Protector. 
you know, protector. Sorry, I just have dog hair on my face. There we go. Protector would be able to, you know, block one of these saplings and then grow with the fury. Grow follows. Yeah, so there's a limit to how many cards you can have in hand. Just 10. Yep, so you can only have 10. So if you have more than 10 and then you try to draw a card, um, then that card just gets obliterated. Which is like exile and magic. Just goes away. Oh man, we are ramping. <laughs> We're not even going to be able to level up Aurelian Soul yet. But, come on. I can't pass up turn 7 Aurelian Soul. I like... I could play the Mountain Scryers and then my Celestial cards will cost one less so we can make these Moon Silvers cost one less. This is pretty juicy. Um, obliterate two enemies or have those things. Um, I don't, wait, I don't have to hold a celestial card anymore, do I? Does not look like it. Nope. So let's go with. I and you, you and me, we'll rule the world. And I thought humans were stupid. I'm probably just going to die. <laughs> you know, I'm at 7, but I came here to do what I was trying to do. I'm happy. I'll knock them dead. Give them a chance. I need to get the one that, like... Uh, is there, like, a celestial that, like, obliterates all their cards? That's what I need. Is that it? Well, things that have, like, three or less power? Now they'll pay attention. So right now, best case scenario is we die. They just go straight to attack. Darn. Because, yeah, I mean, I block three of the things, we take five now. Alright, we still got turn seven of Rillian Soul. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's tough. Like, being able to go wide and hit really hard and have Blighted Caretaker... You know, that's just tough to deal with when you don't have any removal, when you're just playing one unit a turn. Like, you just can't, you can't really play one unit a turn and beat, like, Blighted Caretaker, Go Wide, Callista. Like, not really possible. Let's start over. New hand. Ugh. Do we have anything that costs one or two mana in the deck? We haven't seen anything yet. Okay, we have Omen Hawk and Solari Shield Bearer. Those are that is a good one drop and a good two drop. We do only have one one drop and one two drop. It's not It's not very many. Just one. Um so yeah, I mean I play Priestess, but then Priestess dies for nothing. Or I play this Sparchaeologist that doesn't Sparkleologist that doesn't do anything either. I don't like either of those. Gosh, this isn't good. My flutter friends are so brave. Guess we're doing this. This, you know, at least doesn't doesn't die to Flea Feather Tracker immediately. Okay, now it does. Journey 
is yours. You don't really have to, help where I can. to do this. You don't have to. We chart our path by the stars. Batter him! Huh. Can't fight on an empty stomach. That is not what I was expecting them to do. They're just letting Tiara die. They could have done that attack and not had any of their things die. That was not a good attack by them. Like they, they could have just had nothing die. I have never forgotten. My shield is yours. All right, well, I couldn't block that thing anyway. Um. Silence a follower. May all those who journey yeah, let's try to obliterate the champions. Eat up, friend. Is this what you see? They look angry. The yeah, arrow post kills us, but this is my best. Um, so just my best block of like staying alive and winning the game. There is nowhere left to go but up. A morsel of my duty's done. Down to two. Now this deck needs Omen Hawks. We you gotta have it like a an early. That's definitely something that we've like we gotta have just things to play early. And Omen Hawk helps like these things like your priest, you know, like these priestesses not be, you know, really poor body wise, you know, stuff like that. It does help. Um, again, Cosmic Inspiration is my best card to play, but we just have to go wide. Just have to. And fortunately, maybe I shouldn't have played that thing to save Trundle and try to have Supernova for this turn. No, it was worth it. Grab the thing with lifesteal. I can put three bodies in play with Priestess, Priestess, Omen Hawk. The one problem with playing the three bodies is it's doing eight. Alright, still not bad. That like takes up like all their mana. And this works out well for me. Because I, I get to save one mana, which that's important. So next turn I can have nine total mana, including the spell mana. So I have supernova mana, and I have just two crappy chump blockers here. So like this this actually is working out pretty well for me. You know, we just block these things. NVD. Try 
to obliterate. <clears throat> wow, they just don't have any other units. That was pretty big. Playing the priestess first, of course, because of daybreak. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. We fight for those who cannot. Cannot. No, Garen, get out of here. My spirit shines. Yeah, we are getting lucky that they have just run out of gas. This seems pretty sweet with the revitalizing roar ice pillar. If you if you make ice pillar cost zero, it's still play refill eight mana. Right? Like that's not changing. So it's just zero mana ref it's just zero refill eight mana. I'm ready to shine. Oh, I guess I don't know what Revitalizing Roar does. <laughs> That's my first time casting Revitalizing Roar. Oh yeah, heal your Nexus by its power. I just I just thought it was heal your Nexus by its CMC and then like by its mana cost. Oh yeah, that was just a waste. Okay, sorry, my bad. Well that yeah, that was dumb. Okay, my bad. <laughs> All right, yeah, I I need to read the cards, but that's the thing about new cards. I won't I won't make that mistake again. Unyielding. So I don't believe I will. Sisters. Daylight star will rule the skies. Uh, let's see. So this costs two less for each dragon or celestial ally. So this will go down to five mana. Five mana, deal 15 damage to all of your opponent's stuff. You know, it's likely they have like some barriers, maybe you can save from because just you know damage. But nope, guess not. Yes, the the sisters plus stars descend. That does look really good. Skies descend. Does look like a good combo. All right, we got Omen Hawk on turn one. Good. We got White Flame Protector to help us on turn four. Good. 
Um, maybe a troll chant for a little save. Behold the infinite. I don't know, it invokes and stuff. We'll try it out. I can see this troll chant being really good against um, Blighted Caretaker. Maybe. And maybe now we, you know, we don't, we're not starting with any of the priestesses, but maybe now we, we draw into like those priestesses that uh, will now actually not just die to everything. So I think it's actually good for us to get Warden's Prey out of here so it doesn't, you know, it's not a Blighted Caretaker target and it's not a... You know, it's not in, in here, like, whenever Callista's in here. They don't just Ravenous Butcher it. I don't know. Like, they obviously, they get the other Last Breath unit. Okay, that that's not what was created. Um, honestly, not not super different for how different is Runeterra from Magic. Not not super different. We shall pierce you know, we're both both card games will start in at twenty life, all that kind of stuff. Um, I do like the gameplay more here. Where all right, we just gotta kill this thing. Like if I if I just play a blocker, they just get challenged. Um, the gameplay is, is, is really even, and every game is close and has a lot of decisions and stuff like that. Um, there's not like the mana issues that the Magic has, where, the, where there's lots of non-games in Magic because of it. Uh, the Shield Bearer doesn't use my mana as well. So let's go with the Fury. Alright, if I attack with the White Flame Protector, they block here. I do the Troll Chant. Or I'll wait till next combat and do Troll Chant. Yes, Rekindler does revive champions that died to Sunburst because it is still just it's damage killing the champion. It does not re revive things that get obliterated, like Falling Comet obliterates. It does not revive that. But no, if you're if you're used to playing magic, it will not be difficult to pick up Rune Terra. There are some, you know, some different like you kinda have to get used to like the um you know the different sequencing patterns and stuff. But it'll not be a difficult game to pick up. So we're down to two. These these blighted caretaker go wide decks are certainly proving to be a difficulty. Trying to play this revitalizing roar on the infinite mind splitter next turn and gain eight, gain nine life. I think it's just you know what we got to do. Um, Yeah, 
Yep. I do think that... I don't really like this card. A nice invoke. And it's burst speed. I do think that that's a better card. I mean, it, that's just a three mana two two. Like a three mana two two is not playable. All right, so we'll have Omen Hawk and then Trundle. We're just gonna have Omen Hawk and see what else we get. Yeah, I feel like this is gonna be a really difficult match. I feel like that they are gonna be going bigger, faster. That they're probably playing the ramp version. We're just starting our fourth game, but um, I would think that, that this version is, would be, I'm pretty sure that the deck that my opponent's playing is going to be a better deck than the deck we're playing, just from how it's felt so far. So is playing the shield bearer there even worth it? Because now, um, you know, now we can't attack. There's no reason to attack and, and let them get the extra card with the Avros and Sentry. We do not want them to have that extra card. At least wait as long as possible to get the extra card. The trolls are going to war. All right, couple good hits with Omen Hawk. Now I don't even know. Like we attack like Trundle turns this protector into a 5-1. Like that's not good. Come on, come on. This just okay. isn't. This isn't good. No, I don't even. I don't want to make that trade. I don't want to trade my one-one for their two-one because then they're drawing a card. I don't. I want them to not have that card because just having that extra card will just speed you up a lot. You know, like the the more you have, the longer you have. Um, like the earlier you have a card, the better. You know, like the later you draw the card, the worse. I guess that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Like the you just get better decisions and everything like that. Like I don't. Even, I don't even want them to draw a card. Like, I don't want to make that trade. Bow to your king. Burn away doubt. Yeah, that's not worth it. Look out for Reavers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you can go find for us? Ooh. Constellations are stories in the sky. The big whiner. All 
All right, so Celestial cards cost one less. So we can play Scryer and play Falling Comet and still have one mana left. I know these paths well. Let's start obliterating. They're continually passing. I'm expecting them to probably have like another uh, mind splitter, but you know, force them to have that. Okay, so obviously we got to get rid of the Aurelian Soul. Your favorite star. I created it. So that's why I wanted to hold on to that Fallen Comet. Your fate has been decided. Now this leaves me with 13 mana. Good number of mana to have. Oh, I guess I could have healed the dragon. Yeah, I, I wasn't really thinking about that. I mean, I was like, could have just, could have just healed the dragon, I suppose. Uh, how do we get... I guess we can't really get rid of this. It's like the... Let's do it spell shield. And spell shield's broken. Alright, well, that... Only gets rid of the spell shield, but still, we'll kill all four of those. Not let their Aurelian Soul level up. Spell shield will be down. Mind Splitter won't be doing anything with these anymore. I'm honestly not sure if it's worth playing the Ice Pillar first or just, like, attacking out here. That's what I kind of think. That's just best to just swing. life total. Right. The maybe our really soul levels up, maybe? Maybe? Mayhaps? I've been doing pretty good so far. We've gotten rid of two mines. We've obliterated two mine splitters. Got rid of one trundle. Got rid of one Aurelian soul. Calm mind and open heart. We have another Aurelian soul in play, though. And they still have a full hand. You know, like they got nine cards. Sure, they have avalanches and ice quakes and all that kind of stuff. Meteor shower get got real punished for not healing this white flame protector. Real punished. Now I'm not gonna level up a Soul. soul. Yeah, 
Yeah, we still have our mind splitter, which can be great. So close. We must make that star sound. So close. Hey, welcome everybody from Avon Snow's stream. Thanks for the raid. Welcome everybody. My, my four mana allegiance card that we, we played there the second to last turn obviously didn't end up working out the thing is is like priestess is not really that good to keep but our deck doesn't like i want one and two mana cards but our deck doesn't have one and two mana cards the chains, they never stop. Right. i do agree with, with reeves here that um but yeah i mean our, our deck is really is much too greedy. We don't have we don't have any defense. Um, we don't have any cheap cards and no defense. And our only uh, card that heals our nexus costs um, you know seven mana and is slow and requires you to have something else. Also, of course, we're playing a third Shadow Isles card, so we're just going to get ran over. Or third Shadow Isles deck. It looks like we're going to get ran over again. Okay. So we have um, the Giddy to block Escaped Abomination, right? Like, we're going to have that block, and then we'll have our 4-4 four, four be able to block the 3-2. That was pretty awesome for us. They had nothing on turn 3, nothing on turn 4. So now we're, now we're back in it with nothing on either of those turns. So this could not have gone better for us. Could not have gone better. Wanna know about that one, hmm? Justice will be served. That's fine. Daylight <laughs> yeah. The These games are yeah, that's true. These games are very long and require a lot of mental effort, and so yeah, if, you know, that does have that's a good call there. Silence has a really has a High reward and high frustration. It is time. Along with it. <laughs> hey, Avon. Yeah, we're, we're playing some Aurelian Soul here. We are, you know, playing a, a do donation deck, playing a viewer submitted deck. Um, it does feel like Aurelian Soul, you gotta be playing a lot of defense, whether it's like, you know, Demacia and have. 
you know, like your other dragons and single combats and that kind of stuff, or with Freljord going like avalanches and that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. So they have the attack token. Let's play this. So we go Trundle here, and we get the Ice Pillar next turn. Strike for justice. Back up to 20. That's like... Uh, yeah, I mean, Trundle's a good good attacker. Yeah, let's do that. We can give, give like, the Radiant Guardian vulnerable. And we can challenge Radiant Guardian with Trundle. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Avon Snow. Yeah, the, the other Trundle Aurelian Soul Deck, that's a tough one to beat, especially trying to go aggro and stuff, like with all those. Um, Smashing. Um, with all those avalanches and everything, that's not one to be ashamed about losing to at all. Written in the stars. Let's just do this. Smack will do. I too, sir. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Sparkyologist, probably. Question is, who she ideally buffing? I don't know. I mean, Trundle, I guess. Oh, we missed our allegiance. It's the first time I missed on that card. Because this is my first time playing Scryer and not a 40 Targon deck. <laughs> it's the first time missing on that. Hey, Trundle. We're going in. So, like the Equinox is good against the Undying, but I probably should just be taking like the huge elusive thing. I mean, we're just not going to be losing this game. I can't imagine. Well, hold on. Hold on. Where there's a will, there's a way. Why am I not playing you? It's pretty cool being able to play Revitalizing Roar and Trundle and Aurelian Soul all in the same turn. That's pretty cool. Allies, answer my call. Down. 
So yeah, that, that should block there. Um, see, the Valfie did a good job, you know, not only got rid of... Um, not, ri not only got rid of the Spell Shield, but also gave them a blocker for the Aurelian Soul. Alright, so and I didn't want to silence the Undying first, because then it would allow the Undying to block. And I didn't want them to be able to block with the Undying. All right, GG's. Two and three. All right, Silenced, yeah. Yeah, tomorrow, so tomorrow is my early stream and the rest of the week's the early stream from um, 4 a, or, sorry, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern and going to about 4, 8, 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, yeah. Yes, Trundle does gain damage from units on board, yes. Um, but the reason why you saw the trundle only go to eight seven instead of you know only go up is because the Aurelian soul on board costs zero because the revitalizing roar. So there is there is actually some downside with this revitalizing roar also because it you know enlighten reduce its cost to zero. So that that's bad for trundle because then trundle needs the the them to be eight plus cost cards. So notice that with the um you know we're doing that with the ice pillar also so yeah turning these things in you know it's cool to put them to zero cost but then that's bad for trundle uh let's see so yeah I, I don't know i didn't i haven't been too impressed with just the slow all all invoke decks um because i because as we saw with like the shadow owls matchups the first two that that one wasn't as aggressive you know that wasn't like callista and, and atrocity and all that kind of stuff like of being really aggressive um they also didn't have blighted caretaker and curse keeper like the other decks did but i just kind of feel like the the way to, to play this deck is the the other way that the traditional way with the ramp cards with trundle with avalanche with ice quake um i just i think that that stuff is honestly kind of better and as I was talking about, I, I do like Star Shaping more than Revitalizing Roar. I, I don't really like this card. So it's cost so much mana. Of course, it's slow speed. Um, so, you know, like they were able to atrocity and kill us in response to this thing. Um, not a big fan of this card. Uh, I have been I have been impressed with Star Shaping. It has been better than I thought it would be. But yeah, just having like Star Shaping, Catalyst of Aeons, all that kind of stuff. That's what I'd kind of recommend. Um, with this deck, I mean... Just only Omen Hawk and only Shield Bear is the only two cards like the you can play that affect the board on turn one or turn two. Pretty rough considering our turn three isn't good any anyway. It's not like you know a, a two two, a two one, or a one two is is helping um, stabilize the board. So like we we have basically hard you know we have hardly any cards. We saw we ba we barely ever had Omen Hawk or Shield Bear. We never had Shield Bear. I guess we did one time and had Omen Hawk like two. Um, you know, so it's hard to have those cards when there's only six of them. And then three mana, we're getting run over also, right? Like our opponents are playing, you know, Callistas and stuff like that. And we're playing one twos and two ones and two twos. So that that's what I think is the main problem with this deck is, is honestly is turn one, two, three. Because then even like turn four, well, at least turn four, you have like the protector. But, you know, hopefully you have like the protector because the mountain scryer is not, not stabilizing for you. And I, so basically that's what I've kind of found with like these these decks that are all in on this invoke um, is that they just aren't doing a good enough good enough job of stabilizing the board one and then two they're also it's also just mostly just playing one unit a turn like each, each turn you just play one unit and like that's that's your mana um, while your opponent you know, are able to, to go wide and and all that kind of stuff so that's why I think that um, the like avalanche and uh, going that kind of route going ramp, um, sweepers with uh, avalanche ice quake you know ways to ways to catch up when you're behind because like these kind of cards are slow and they'll put you behind slow as in like they're really small bodies um, that aren't trading with their mana cost and so you're going to be behind and so you need to you need big effects to to catch up and this deck the big effect to catch up i guess is revitalizing roar but that's just too kind of too slow um So that's that's what, that's kind of my thoughts here with the Trundle Aurelian Soul, and kind of how I felt about like the these Mountain Scryer decks. It's it's difficult to to find 
to really pull off Mountain Scryer because you need so much Targon, and it is a slow card. And Targon doesn't have like the. Well, I mean, you got it. Basically, with, with that, you got to be playing a lot of like the, the cheap Targon cards, I think, and not just big, uh, invoke kind of deck. Um. Yeah, Behold the Infinite, same kind of, like, yeah, this is a two-mana card, so it's like, okay, well, we got another two-drop, but this doesn't affect the board at all. So, you know, like, it's basically, it's just cycling, right? Like, it's it's a it's a really good card late. Like, this is a great card late to, like, help you find a powerful thing for just two mana, and, it, and it's great with cards that um, care about you casting spells. You know, like, there's obviously, there's a ton of cards that, that care about you casting spells, and so it's great with that. Um, but just, yeah, as like an early play, uh, not so good because you'll just fall, you know, you're, you're spending mana in the early turns and not affecting the board while your opponent is probably spending mana and affecting the board in the early turns. All right, there we go. But that's, that's a, a different version of Trundle, really in soul. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, feel free to give it a chance though. And, uh, leave those comments. Let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, anything else that you want to see? on stream um or anything like that feel free to uh leave those comments questions anything i always appreciate them thank you so much though for watching some trundle really in soul and i'll see you for the next video